Hello my dear students. So I am going to continue with the extra questions. In the previous chapter we completed the questions from your textbook and then I discuss some MCQ type questions. So this is extra question 2 related to reproduction of organisms under the lesson continuity of life. So the que first question under extra question 2, what is reproduction? What is reproduction? It is a life process in which new generation is produced from the existing generation. That is what is reproduction. So if we write the answer, the life process that produces new generation from the existing generation is known as reproduction. Write the two main types of reproduction. What are the two types? Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. The two types. Then why is reproduction important to living organisms? Why is it important? Because it is needed to ensure the continuity of life. So here we can say it is important to ensure the continuity of life. So the three questions. What is reproduction? The life process that produces new generation from the existing generation is known as reproduction. Write the two main types of reproductions, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. And why is reproduction important to living organism? It is important to ensure the continuity of life. So the next question. Extra question 3. Fill in the following table with three differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. So three differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. You all can remember in asexual reproduction there is only one parental organism that contributes for the reproduction. Whereas in sexual there are two parents, parental organism that is one is the maternal organism the other one is the paternal organism. So in asexual reproduction there are no production of gametes. But in sexual reproduction gametes are produced either the pollens and ovules in plants or sperms and eggs in man. Then if you take the asexual reproduction, there is no meiosis taking place. Whereas in sexual reproduction, there will be meiosis. And in asexual reproduction, a large number of offspring are produced within a very short period of time. Whereas in sexual reproduction, the increase in number of organisms occurs very slowly. And also, in sexual reproduction, you all know there is a possibility of variations taking place. Therefore, new species can be produced during sexual reproduction. But that does not happen in asexual reproduction. So if you look at the organisms, normally in primitive plants and animals, the asexual reproduction takes place, whereas in plants as well as evolutionary advanced animals, the sexual reproduction takes place. So those are all the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. You all are supposed to write 
three differences. So here I will say contribution from only one parental organism. Here both maternal and paternal organisms are involved. Then the second one we can say gametes are not produced, gametes are produced. Gametes are not produced. Here gametes are produced. So then the third one I will say in a sexual reproduction a large number of offspring are produced within a short time. A large number of of offspring are produced within a short period of time. But here during sexual reproduction increase in in number of organisms occurs slowly. So here I have written down three differences. Contribution from only one parental organism for asexual. Both maternal and paternal organisms are involved in sexual reproduction. Gametes are not produced, asexual reproduction. Gametes are produced, sexual reproduction. Then a large number of offspring are produced within a short period of time for asexual reproduction. An increase in number of organism occurs slowly, that is for sexual reproduction. So as I told you all, you all can say meiosis does not take place in asexual, meiosis takes place in sexual. Variations and formation of new species does not occur in asexual reproduction whereas new characteristics are formed and new species are produced in sexual reproduction. And here this occurs in primitive animals and plants whereas sexual reproduction occurs in plants as well as evolutionary advanced animals. So you all can write any of the three differences students. So I am sure you all would have written them correctly. With that I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 4. Reproduction of plants occurs by natural and artificial methods. So if it's natural, we call them natural vegetative propagation. Artificial is artificial vegetative propagation. In addition to that, there is the sexual reproduction of plants that involves pollination, fertilization and fruit and seed dispersal. So the first question. What is natural vegetative propagation of plants? What is natural vegetative propagation? The reproduction in which new offspring or new generation is produced from aerial or underground parts of a plant. So here we can say what is natural propagation of plant? The process of producing offspring, you can say offspring or new generation, within brackets I will write that, ration naturally 
by aerial or underground parts of a plant. So that is natural vegetative propagation. Then there is a second question. Write three vegetative parts of plants that give rise to vegetative propagation. Three parts of plants that give rise to vegetative propagation and write one example for each method. So you all know students, plants can reproduce vegetatively by roots. What are the examples? You can think of curry leaves, belly, guava, all those reproduce by roots. Then we have the leaves, bryophyllum or acapana or sadaikarachan, then there is peperomia, then there is begonia, they reproduce by leaves. Then there are the runners, go to color and all those, they reproduce by runners. Then there are the suckers, pineapple, then grass, paddy, all those reproduce by suckers. Even banana, that is also by suckers. Then there are the bulbils. Bulbils, what are the examples? Pineapple, jute, hundala, all those are by bulbils. Then we have the underground stems. So here it just says vegetative parts. Under underground stems, you all can remember there are four types. The rhizomes, ginger, turmeric, canna, all those are by underground stem, that is the rhizome. Then we have the comb. Comb different types of yams, taro yam, coco yam, all those are by combs. Then we have the bulbs, red onion, big onion, leeks, all those are bulbs. And also we have stem tubers, potato and coleus, potato, all those are stem tubers. So here you are supposed to write three vegetative parts and for each one you need to write just one example. So for that, I'll write one example as runner. So runner, you know, go to color or what we call as well array. So that re is reproduced by runners. Then what else? We can write bulbil. Bulbil. Bulbil, I will write the example as pineapple. Then we will write an example of underground stem. I will say rhizome. If you write as underground stem students, you can write any example. Since I am writing it specifically as rhizome, it has to be either ginger, turmeric. So I will write ginger here. So three vegetative parts, runners, bulbil, rhizome. You can even write leaves, any other example as well. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next question. Extra question five. Examples of some vegetative propagation methods are given below. Answer the questions based on these methods. So here you can see the picture students, the three vegetative parts, propagation A. You can identify that. It is an underground stem, but is that stem tube. So this, an example is potato or coleus potato. Then propagation B, what is that? It is a rhizome. And so in examples for rhizome, ginger, turmeric. Then here you can see propagation C is by a bulb. Bulb, red onion, big onion, leeks, all those are bulbs. So we have identified the three different propagation methods. So examples of some vegetative propagation methods are given below. Answer the questions based on these methods. The first question, the above methods of propagation occurs by stems. What type of stem are the above? What are they? They are all underground stems. So underground stems. Then the next one. Another type according to the external features of the above method is not shown above. What is that? 
So you all know students, underground stems are divided into four groups or four types based on their external features. So we identify the stem tuber, then the rhizome and the bulb. What is the other one? It is the comb. So here the answer is comb. Then the third question, write two examples each for the three methods shown above. So we need to write three examples each. So there are first one, propagation A, I will write what are the, what is the propagation? So in brackets, I will write what that method is. It is a stem tuber. So two examples, we need to write two examples for each, potato and whole year's potato. Then propagation B, what is that? Propagation B is rhizome. So rhizome examples, ginger, turmeric, arata, any of those you can write. Then propagation C, what is C? C we can identify it as bulb. So C is bulb and examples of bulb, red onion, big onion and leeks. So here I will write red onion and leeks. So we have identified the three methods. You all can see that students. Same tuber, then rhizome and bulb. So these are all underground stems. And the one that is missing from the four types is comb. And then we have written examples. A is stem tuber for that potato and coleus potato. B is rhizome ginger and turmeric and C is bulb that is red onion and leeks. With that I am going to move on to the next question. Extra question 6. Some plants propagated by vegetative methods are given below. Again here vegetative methods. Classify them into their respective methods and fill in the table. So here initially the plants are given. Pineapple, curry leaves, go to color, begonia, paddy, banana, jute, breadfruit, krishanthimam, guava, sweet potatoes, akapana, maharavana, raula, and hondala. So here you are given the table. Runners, you know what runners are. The stem that grows over the soil and different parts of the soil you get the adventitious roots which produce the new plant. Then leaves, you can remember from the edge of the leaves. There are regions where new roots are formed and that give rise to the new plant. Then suckers, it is again part of the stem. A horizontal growth of the stem that produces a new plant. Then the roots, roots you all know from the above, below the soil, roots can come out from a different place out of the soil and give rise to a new plant. Then we have bulbils. Bulbils again is an aerial part of the stem that produces new plants. So we have to classify all these plants into these five categories. Pineapple. Now pineapple actually reproduces by two methods. What are the two methods? Pineapples can reproduce by suckers. They can reproduce by bulbils. So you have to write it for both places. So pineapple. Pineapple, here also we have pineapple. Then we have curry leaves, they reproduce by roots. Curry leaves, roots. Any other methods? No. Then we have go to color, go to color by runners. Go to color by runners. Then we have begonia, begonia by leaves, begonia by leaves. Then we have the next one, paddy, paddy by what? Again suckers, 
paddy suckers. Banana. Banana is also suckers. So, banana is by suckers. So, the next plant is jute. Jute reproduces by bulb. So, here jute reproduces by bulb. Then we have breadfruit. Breadfruit, how does it reproduce? It reproduces by roots. So, here breadfruit. Then we have Krishantimam. Krishantimam again reproduces by suckers. Krishantimam. Krishantimam by suckers. Then we have guava. Guava, what is the method? It is again by roots. Guava roots. After guava, what do we have? We have sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes reproduce by runners. So, sweet potatoes by runners. Sweet potato. Sweet potatoes by runners. Then we have akapana. Akapana by leaves. Akapana reproduces by leaves. And then we have maharavana raula. That again reproduces by runners. Maharavana Raula. Maharavana Raula. That reproduces by runners. Then we have Hondala. Hondala reproduces by bulbils. Hondala. So, have we classified all the plant students? We will check again. Pineapple by suckers as well as bulbils. Then we have curry leaves. They are reproduced by roots. Then we have gotukola by runners. Begonia by leaves. Paddy by suckers. Banana suckers. Then jute by bulbils. Then we have breadfruit that by roots. Then we have krishanthimam that again by suckers. Then we have guava, that is by roots. Then sweet potatoes, they are reproduced by runners. Then akapana by leaves. Maharavana raula, that again by runners. And finally we have hondala, that is reproduced by bulbils. So is that okay students? I am sure you all were also able to classify all of these correctly. So with that, now you all will remember most of the examples for the different types of natural vegetative propagation of plants. With that, I am going to move on to the next question. Extra question 7. Rooting of stem cuttings is a method of artificial vegetative propagation of plants. So now we have come to artificial vegetative propagation. There are four different methods that we have discussed. Rooting of stem cuttings, layering, grafting and tissue culture. So this Rooting of stem cuttings is one method of artificial vegetative propagation of plants. The first question. Write the rest of the methods of artificial vegetative propagation of plants. What are the other methods? I just told you all. One is grafting. Then we have layering. And there is tissue culture. Second question, write the name of three plants that are propagated by rooting of stem cuttings. What are the plants propagated by rooting of stem cuttings? Roses, Bougainvillea, Exora, all these are plants that are propagated by rooting of stem cutting. So we can write those examples. If you all are familiar with other examples also, you can write. Even you all know shoe flower. Jasmine, all those can be propagated by stem cuttings, rootings of stem cuttings. So, if I write the examples, I can say rose, bougainvillea, bougainvillea, then 
exora all these are propagated by rooting of stem cuttings so with that students i will move on to the next question extra question 8 initiate rooting while it is still attached to the mother plant is known as layering so when the twig is attached to the mother plant itself we initiate rooting and then that is replanted as a new plant that process of vegetative propagation that is an artificial method that is known as layering the first one identify the two types of layering shown below what are the two types of layering shown below here you can see they have chosen a twig that is closer to the ground level so we call that as the ground layering so this is ground layering then here of course these are twigs that are somewhat far away from the ground so we call that as the aerial layering process aerial layering then the next one write two plants that are propagated by each method so you all can remember the plants that are propagated by each method for ground layering you all can remember jasmine and lemon they are usually propagated by ground layering so ground layering jasmine and lemon then we have the second method aerial layering what are the examples again lemon can be propagated by aerial layering and also pomegranate so pomegranate and lemon both of them are artificially propagated by aerial layering method so you have identified the methods ground layering and aerial layering and for ground layering examples are jasmine and lemon aerial layering from pomegranate and lemon so with that we will move on to the next question extra question 9 identify the methods of grafting shown in the diagram so what is grafting students it is an artificial vegetative propagation method where we use two plants two parts one is the stock that has a good root system it is fixed to the soil itself and we bring in the cyan cyan can be either a bud or a twig so based on that there are two methods of grafting bud grafting and twig grafting and in that also depending on the shape of the cut we have different types of grafting so the first question is to identify the methods of grafting shown in the diagram so here you can see students this is the bud that is grafted to the stock so this first method is known as the bud grafting so here it is bud grafting so in bud grafting what do they do this is the cyan that is the bud that is being brought in then here you can see this is the stock plant the stem of the stock plant you have to put a cut then you need to insert the bud and then you have to wrap it with a strip of polythene starting from below you need to wrap it upwards from bottom to top manner leave it like that for a few days until the bud starts to grow once you see that growing then you have to remove this uh, strip of polythene and again re-wrap it exposing the bud to the outer environment that is this method then we have the second method this you all know is twig grafting what is twig grafting again you can see the stock plant that it has a good root system we bring in the cyan but both those plants have to have similar diameter and they need to belong to the dicot group why they need to have a cambium so that the cambium will fuse together and grow and form the new plant so here the stock and the cyan 
Again, depending on the shape, there are different methods. The cyan is inserted into the stock and you have to wrap a strip of polythene around that. That also from bottom to top manner. Then we have the second question. Two parts of the plants are grafted together. What are they? I have already mentioned that. The stock and the cyan. Stock and the cyan. So those are the two parts. You have identified the method and you have written the two parts of the plant that are used. With that, the next part of the question, part 3, grafting can only be carried out with dicotyledonous plants or dicot plants. What is the reason? I just told you all that. In fusing of stock with cyan, especially with the twig grafting, you need to have a cambium. The plants need to have a cambium. And cambium is present only in dicot plants. So therefore, it can be carried out only with dicotyledonous plants. So here we can say the cambium of the stock and cyan should fuse and grow together in twig grafting. The cambium is present only in dicot plants. Therefore, grafting is possible only with dicots. So that is the reason. The cambium of the stock and cyan should fuse and grow together in twig grafting. The cambium is present only in dicots. Therefore, grafting is possible only with dicots. That's the answer to this question. So part 4, write one advantage of grafting. You all know there are different advantages of grafting. What are the advantages? Now this can be obtained where we have a plant with a very strong root system and the shoot system will have the desired characteristics. And also we can produce strong offspring. And also this can be carried out with plants where the, they do not propagate successfully with seeds. Even though seeds are produced, they are not propagated successfully. Then, of course, you can use this method. So, we will have to write down one of those advantages. Write one advantage of grafting. So, we can say, can produce plants with a very strong root system then you can say plants that do not produce seeds or fruits can be propagated successfully by this method and also we can combine characteristics of two different plants those are advantages of grafting i have written down one advantage then the next one Next part of the question, part 5, write one disadvantage of grafting. So what are the disadvantages of grafting? One thing, you cannot produce flowers with very good wood value. So we can say the wood value of plant is lost. And then it is not successful with all the plants. Why is that? Because it can be carried out only with dicot plants. And also these plants have very short lifespan. So because of that also we cannot reproduce them and that is a disadvantage of 
reproducing vegetatively by grafting. So we can write one disadvantage there. So the plants have a short lifespan. So if we look at the question students, there were three parts. First one, grafting can only be carried out with dicot plants. You all know the reason because there needs to be a cambium. Cambium is present only in dicots. So it can be done only with dicots. Then we were supposed to write one advantage of grafting. I have written can produce plants with very strong root system. Then you all know we can combine plants which are resistant to pest, plants that are resistant to pests and diseases and also environmental changes. And also re you can reproduce plants that do not reproduce successfully by production of seeds. So those are all advantages of grafting. And then for disadvantage, I have written the plants have a short lifespan. You can also say that you can do that or carry out this method with certain plants only or it is not successful with every plant. Another reason you all know students, we need to find the plants with cambium. It has to be a dicot plant and also the size of the stem, the diameter of the stem have to actually be similar so that you can easily insert the cyan into the stock. So that also is a problem and also it reduces the wood value of plants. So these are reasons why these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of grafting method. With that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 10. New offspring which are identical to the parent plant can be produced by cultivating any vegetative tissue of a plant in a culture medium under control conditions. So you all know what this method is. It is tissue culture. So there we can produce new offspring which are identical to the parent plant because you are going to take a tissue from the parent plant and that will be used to produce all the new offspring. So the genes from the parental plant is going to be used. So exactly the same or identical offspring are produced. And for that, we need to have a culture medium and control conditions. You all know that students. So a culture medium is used to carry out tissue culture. Agar is one of the substances that needs to be added to the medium. You all are familiar with that. The first question, what is the name given to the offspring produced by tissue culture? What do we call them? They are known as clones. So we call them as clones. Then the second one, write two tissues that are generally used for tissue culture. What are the tissues used for tissue culture? The apical bud is used, lateral bud is used or the root tip is used. So here we can write any of the two tissues. Write two tissues that are generally used for tissue culture. I will write apical bud and root tip. You can also write the lateral bud. Any two is correct. So with that, I'll move on to the next question that is again part of this question. The third part, write three substances that need to be included in the culture medium. You all know students, there are four substances that need to be included in the culture medium. What are they? You need to add sucrose, you need to add vitamins and minerals and also you need to add plant growth substances. So we can write any three substances. Write three substances that need to be included in the culture medium. So we will say sucrose. So next one we can say nutrients. Then we need to arrive, add plant growth substances. So sucrose, nutrients and plant growth substances. Then what is the function of agar? 
we need to add agar to the medium. You all know it is extracted from an algae. Why do we use agar? To solidify the culture medium. So what is the function of agar? It solidifies the culture medium. So that is the function of the function of aga. Then we have another question. Write three advantages of tissue culture. What are the advantages of tissue culture? You can produce offspring identical to the mother plant or the parental plant. That is one advantage. Then you can produce a very large number of offspring at a time. You can produce a very large number of offspring within a short period of time. And also you can produce healthy offspring in a limited space. A large number of healthy offspring in a limited space. And also you can produce offspring with desired characteristics using hybrid tissues. So those are all advantages of tissue culture. You can write any three advantages. So I will say offspring identical to the mother plant can be produced. One advantage. Then another one we can say can produce a large number of offspring with within a short period of time. Then we can say can produce a large number of healthy offspring in a limited space. So here students I have written three advantages. Offspring identical to the mother plant can be produced, can produce a large number of offspring within a short period of time and also can produce a large number of healthy offspring in a limited space. You can even say can produce a large number of offspring at a time and also you can say that we can produce offspring with desired characteristics using hybrid tissues. So all those are advantages of tissue culture. So I am sure students you all were also able to answer all these questions correctly. So with that I will move on to the next question. Extra question 11. Longitudinal section of a typical flower is given below. Identify the parts labeled A to K. So you all know students what a typical flower is. A flower that includes all the parts especially the androsium and gynosium all both are in the flower. So it will be a bisexual flower. You are familiar with all these parts students. A is stigma then B is style. You can see C this part although it points to the ovules this is actually related to ovary. That is why they have labeled A, B and C together as D. You all know it is the pistil or the gynoseum. So therefore C we will take it as ovary. Then we have the rest of the parts. I will label the first few parts. So A as I told you is stigma. Then B style. C ovary. 
and D we will take it as gynoecium or you can even write it as pistil. Any one of the names is more than enough. You don't have to use both the names. Then we have the next part E. E is the anther. Then what is F? F is the filament. So anther and filament together is G. That is the androsium or the stamen. So here E, anther. Then F is filament. Then we have G, that is the androsium or stamen. Then we have H. What is that structure? You all know it can be present in white color or other colors. One of the functions is to attract the insects for pollination. It is the petal. H is petals or petal. Then I, you can see, this is the green color structure. It is the sepal. Then we have J, this part. All the parts of the flowers are arranged in a whorl on this structure. What is that? It is the receptacle. 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 Then we have K. What is K? It is the structure that attaches the flower to the branch. It's called either the stalk or the pedicel. So here I'll write both names, stalk or pedicel. So these are the part students. Stigma, style, ovary, everything together, gynoecium or pistil. Then you have anther, filament, together stamen or androsium, H, the petal. I sepals, then we have the receptacle J and K is the pedicel or stalk. So we have identified all the parts. With this, there are some more questions. We will answer those questions. The first one, what is the significance of a flower? What is the significance of a flower? Flower is the reproductive structure of angiosperms or plants, we can say. It is the Sexual reproductive ductive structure of angiosperms. Or you can also write the answer as it contains both the male and female reproductive structures. Therefore, it is important for the sexual reproduction of plants or angiosperms. Then the next question. Write the letters relevant to androsium and gynoecium. We have already identified the parts. Androsium and gynoecium. What are the letters relevant to androsium? Here you all can see students in the diagram. Androsium is given the letter G and gynoecium is given the letter D. So those are what you need to write here. Androsium G and gynoecium D. Then what type of cell division takes place in parts C and E? So we have the part C and E. What is part C? Part C, you can see it's the ovary and part E, it is the anther. Inside the ovaries, the ovules are produced. Inside the anther, the pollens are produced. So what type of cell division takes place there? The meiosis process where haploid cells are produced from diploid cells. So what type of cell division takes place in part C and E? It is meiosis. Meiosis takes place in parts C and E. I am sure you all were able to answer up to here. I will move on to the next part. Part 4. What is the function of H in plant propagation? So you can see here students from the diagram H is the petals. Petals are needed for what? I told you all before also. They attract insects for pollination. So that is needed for sexual reproduction. So that is the importance there. 
What is the function of H chain propagation? The, they attract insects for pollination. The petals have another function also. They protect the inner parts of the flower in the bud stage. But that is not related to propagation. In propagation, that is the reproduction process, they attract insects for pollination. Then the fifth question. Pollens produced within structure E fall on part A. So again, if you look at the diagram, students, structure E is the anther and part A is the stigma. So from anther to the stigma, if the pollens fall and there is only one flower, what is that process? It is the self-pollination. So you all know that. What is that process called? Self-pollination. We have another question here. What is the disadvantage of the above process? What is the disadvantage? Here there is only one flower. So there is no possibility of mixing of characters. Therefore, new species cannot be produced. That is the disadvantage. In self-pollination, Characters or characteristics of different plants, plants cannot mix. Therefore, new species cannot be produced. So in self-pollination, characteristics of different plants cannot mix. Therefore, new species cannot be produced. That is the disadvantage of the above method. With that, the next slide again Extra question 12. Briefly explain the following terms. So here they have given four different terms. First one is bisexual flowers. What are bisexual flowers? Flowers that possess both male and female structures. So here we can say flowers that possess both male and female reproductive structures. Reproductive structures. That is what we call as bisexual flowers. Then what are unisexual flowers? Flowers that possess either the male or the female reproductive structure is known as unisexual flowers. So here we can say flowers that possess either the male or female reproductive structure. Then the next one. What is a pistillate flower? A pistil is gynoecium. It is the female reproductive structure of plants. So pistillate flowers flowers that only possess the gynoecium or the pistil. So here we can say the flower that 
possess only the gynoseum or pistil is known as pistillate flower. So then, what is a staminate flower? The flower that possesses only the male reproductive structure. That is the stamen or the androsium. So here we can say the flower that possess only the androsium or stamen is known as staminate flower. So I am sure student you would have explained all these terms correctly. Bisexual flower, flowers that possess both male and female reproductive structures. You can say are known as bisexual flowers. The same way unisexual flowers, flowers that possess either the male or female reproductive structures are known as unisexual flowers. Then we have pistillate flower, the flower that possesses only the gynoseum or the pistil is known as pistillate flower. Then staminate flowers, the flower that possess only the androsium or stamen is known as staminate flower. So with that students, I am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter, I will be discussing some more extra questions with you all.